Nikola Jokic is still the best player in the world, and he has that title likely uh, through this playoffs. We'll see what happens in the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference. But I, I do want to say one thing. You know, the, the, the comparison between the two, especially over the last three years, has centered a lot around uh, the analytics argument in favor of Jokic and the, the defensive argument in favor of Embiid. Well, in the last uh, probably six months, uh, that sort of uh, gap has been slimmed on both sides of the ball, in my opinion. We saw last year in the playoffs uh, Jokic make a, a lot of impact defensively. It's not like he ever was a traffic cone like I was when I played. Uh, and then on the other side for Embiid, you know, his playmaking has been spectacular this year. You mentioned he's averaging a career high in assists. Uh, and, and the analytics now also love Embiid. And if you look at a lot of the advanced stats, the singular player stats, Embiid and Jokic are one, two in a lot of these. So to me, Jokic still has that title because of the title run, because of the way that he finished uh, or started out this season. But Embiid is definitely in the conversation for best player in the world and has a strong and compelling case. You know, JJ, um, I, I get your point and I agree with you. Um, but, you know, Embiid is five and two in straight up matches in the seven straight up matches that they've had, but that's about the only thing that he has going for him. Uh, Jokic is a champion. Embiid hasn't even been to a conference finals. We get all of that. I'm looking at Embiid, however, and I'm comparing him to himself based off of last year. He's averaging a career high with 6.6 .6 assists right now. Leads the team in assist points created, uh, you know, obviously, you know, uh, at 17.6, up from 10.8. And so I'm looking at things like that, and I'm seeing some of the comparable numbers, averaging 33.1 just like he did last season, averaging 34.7 minutes compared to 34.6 last year. And I'm looking at his game, and I, if you ask me in terms of a game, his footwork, his defensive prowess, just as, I mean, just the touch, the movement. I mean, he's so special of a talent. But we also have to take that intangible into consideration. Jokic galvanizes, and it's not to say that Embiid does not. But put JJ and Austin up because I want to be very careful. I want to make sure that I'm clear when I say this, okay? It's not Embiid's fault in any way. I love him, love his personality. It's not his fault. But on his watch, we had the Ben Simmons situation and now the James Harden situation. That's not his fault, but we don't have that in Denver. When in Denver, I mean, it's just everything's about Jokic and everybody loves Jokic. You see Embiid now with Maxi and Tobias and every, you know, everybody else. They love Embiid. I love Embiid. The coaches love Embiid. Doc Rivers loved Embiid when he was there. Management loves Embiid, et cetera, et cetera. But those problems, albeit not his fault, happened under his watch and may have served to derail the championship aspirations that he obviously has. Jokic doesn't have that problem. That's why he's a champion. And so we have to take that into consideration, even though it may be of no fault to Embiid. Right now, you've got to give Jokic to Ed, but as an as edge, but as a talent, Embiid is all-time special, no doubt. Yeah, I, I don't even think there's anything to even debate here. Uh, I, I think Joel Embiid is one of the most electrifying players in the NBA. Uh, his skill set at his size is unprecedented. The, his, his post moves, the way he can go from outside, inside, nobody can guard him. Uh, we looked at his numbers earlier. He's having better numbers now than he did last year, uh, and that's coming off in an MVP season, which may or may not have gone to him. Maybe there's voters fatigue there. I, I don't know. Uh, but Nikola Jokic is the best basketball player on the planet right now, and he has been for the past couple of years, and he is this year. Uh, the, the way he plays – his unselfishness, the way he's able to dominate a game. We talked about it uh, yesterday in terms of a man having a control on the game. We talk about LeBron James. We talked about Chris Paul. We talked about a lot of these uh, great players that we play with. Nikola Jokic is a guy I have never either played against or played with the team in terms of when I played with him, a guy who's had that much control on a game on a night-to-night -night basis. And people talk about his lack of athleticism, which he actually is a freak athlete. It's just not your traditional type of athlete. His touch, his feel, his will to win. And like you said, Stephen, hey, guys like playing with him. He doesn't have these issues in the locker room. I played there. It was, it, there, it was consistency every single day. He has work ethic, and it starts at the top. This is a guy who, I mean, when we talk about you talk about voters fatigue. He could easily, we've seen it with LeBron James. This guy could win four to five MVPs in a row if we really were just going off based of who's the best basketball player on the you planet. You know what? 
You know what I find so amazing about him? A couple of things. Number one, he can't jump onto a curb, and you can't stop him. There's nothing you can do. You can't stop him. That's number one. Number two, you know what? You see guys walking around. They're physiqued up. They, they look conditioned or whatever. He just look, he just, he just look like he wobbling around. Yeah. And nobody can mess with him. He just, I see guys' muscles coming out of everywhere. He's just moving them aside but like they're nothing. I just look at him. I'm like, this guy's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Do you know what's crazy is he, he's such a freak athlete. It's just not traditional. People don't understand that for a man his size to be running up and down the floor with that much onus and pressure on your shoulders every night, to be in that type of shape at that size, doesn't get injured a lot, has incredible footwork, yes. his touch around the rim, he probably one of the be has one of the best floaters in basketball and he's a center. Like that shot he gets in the paint all the time and that little pick and roll with Jamal Murray where he's shooting that little 10-footer over like another 7-footer that's guarding him. People think it's just an easy shot. It's one of the hardest shots in basketball. You know what I mean? And this is a guy who shoots at one of the highest clips consistently. Crazy. Yeah, okay. To some people, Jokic aesthetically may not be pleasing, but if you really break down the game and the way he uses his mind, his body to anticipate, I, you know, I always go back... Think about how many blind lob passes he throws to Aaron Gordon in the dunker spot. And think about how many times that Aaron Gordon is covered on that blind pass and at the last second he kicks, kicks to KCP for a wide open three in the corner. Like, that's a great basketball player. Maybe it, it looks a little bit different than a guy, a wing guy guard, you know, coming down on the wing, isoing, putting the ball between his leg, hitting a st tough step back jumper. It looks different, but it's as dominant as anything in this league right now. The thing that I want to mention is this, though, because you bring up aesthetics. That may have been what caused folks to pass on Halliburton. Like Bob Myers was bringing that up yesterday. You know, you see his leadership or whatever. You see his jump shot. It looks a bit awkward. looks a bit ugly. It goes in, damn it. Halliburton can ball. Obviously, Jokic is, is one of the all-time greats. Aesthetic, that, that's, you, you pointed that out. But, but I will tell you this, J.J., where it's alarming with what you say because you're absolutely right. It's one thing for me and others in my position to point to things aesthetically, right? It's another thing entirely when I can point to a myriad of executives in the National Basketball Association who are guilty of doing the same exact thing you just pointed out. They look at somebody aesthetically, and they say, hey, that's the guy, and they end up missing – a lot, a lot of times, you just know, as much, Steve, if not Steve, more, than they Stephen make a. the right pick because of that. Stephen A., I, I, I call those guys hotel lobby all-stars. <laughs> I, I, seriously, hotel lobby all-stars. <laughs> you're, 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 you're just a person sitting in a hotel lobby, and an NBA bus shows up, and the team walks through in their practice gear, and you're like, oh, well, that, the way that guy walks, or the, the, that guy's physique. Oh, he looks, like, he looks like the best player. I guarantee you, if you watch... A, a bunch of teams walk through a hotel lobby. Whoever the hotel lobby all-star is not the best player, right? Yeah. Austin touched on this perfectly. There is so much that goes yeah. into being a basketball athlete beyond just running and jumping. Totally. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. right and by the way, congratulations to you, the old man in the pivot and the three, the old man in the three, because I'm going to steal that line. You know what I'm saying? Was it hotel what? Was it hotel hall? What, what, do, you, what do you call them? What do you call them, J.J. Reddick? Hotel, hotel, lo hotel Lobby All-Stars. Hotel, hotel Lobby All-Stars. All hotel Lobby All-Stars. I'm using that. I'm coining that. I'm going to tell everybody, J.J. Reddick, Hotel Lobby All-Stars. You got it. I love it. You okay. got it.